Sarvabhoma asked Gopinath Acharya, brother-in-law, from which sampradaya did he take sannyas? He said he took sannyas from one great sannyasi named Keshav Bharati. Sarvabhoma said, this is a second class sampradaya. He should take initiation from Saraswati sampradaya. I can arrange for this. Gopinath Acharya said, what is this nonsense you are speaking? He is the supreme personality of Godhead. He doesn't require any high class or low class sampradaya. He is supreme. He is beyond all these ritualistic regulations. Sarvabhoma, what are you nonsense you talking? He's the supreme Lord. According to the Shastra, Vishnu's name is Triyuga, which means he only appears in three yugas. Satya Yuga, Treta Yuga, Dwarpa Yuga. In Kali Yuga, he does not come. But then Gopinath Acharya began to explain, according to the Shastra, that in Kali Yuga, he appears, but not as God, but in the role of a devotee. And this is why he is called Triyuga. He is a covered incarnation. He does not come to declare himself the Supreme Godhead, but to teach by his example, he comes in the role of a devotee. And he began to establish on the basis of so much scripture that Mahaprabhu was the Supreme Lord from Mahabharata, Srimad Bhagavat, the various Puranas. But Sarvabhoma and his assistants, they could not accept. And this is very important, that no one should accept anyone as being Bhagavan unless they are properly endorsed by the scripture. Sarvabhoma's questions and his doubts were a great lesson to all of us. Today, especially in this land of India, there are thousands of Bhagavans, of avatars, who declare themselves to be God, and if they can perform some meager, mystic demonstrations, some gold, some ashes, reading someone's mind, healing someone's disease, you can buy gold in the goldsmith store. You can get ashes from any fire. You can get your disease cured by some doctor. These things are not the work of a Bhagavan, of a God. Krishna lifted Govardhan Hill. He established 16,108 forms and lived with all of his queens. Kurma. Avatar appeared in a tortoise form so many hundreds and thousands of miles long. Matsya Avatar was a fish millions of miles long. Ramchandra, we see these great avatars, they do extraordinary work. Unless a person is established through the scripture that God comes in a certain time, in a certain way, for the certain purpose, no one should be accepted. But even after citing so much scripture, Sarvabhoma was not able to understand. So Gopinath Acharya said to him right here in this very house, he said, Sarvabhoma, until you receive the mercy of the Lord, you will never understand who he is. So Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya approached Mahaprabhu and told him that you are very young, only 24 years old, and you're so beautiful, so handsome. How will you ever maintain the vows of a sannyasi? Very difficult in this age of Kali Yuga, unless you are thoroughly learned in the science of Vedanta. So let me teach you Vedanta, because I am the foremost teacher of Vedanta in all of India. In fact, coming to this home, great sannyasis, renunciates, tapasis, learned scholars, they would all learn from Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya, from all east, west, north and south, they would come. So Lord Chaitanya said, yes, you are so kind to me, please teach me Vedanta, protect me. And the devotees, they were so angry with Sarvabhoma, what nonsense he wants to teach you. Mahaprabhu said, no, no. He has fatherly affection for me. He wants to help me. Why should you criticize him? Let him render this service. So in the Jagannath temple, for seven days, Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya declared the philosophy of monism to Mahaprabhu, and he sat and he listened. And after seven days, Sarvabhoma said, I have ascribed to you such high truths, and you have not asked a single question? You haven't even responded to anything I have said. I do not know whether you are listening or not listening, understanding or not understanding. What is this? And Gauranga Mahaprabhu replied, that the teachings of Veda Vyas, as he has written in the Vedanta Sutra, are as clear and easy to understand as the sun in noonday. But your explanations are like a dark, thick cloud covering all the true meanings of the words of Veda Vyas. Sarvabhoma was not accustomed to people telling him like this. <laughs> what is, what, you know who you're talking to? People from far and wide come to learn at my feet, and you're saying like this? Yes, I am saying like this. If you have a better explanation, you tell me what the Vedanta Sutra is saying. <laughs> Mahaprabhu began to explain in so many wonderful ways, not even touching a single way that Sarvabhoma 
And Sarvabhauma Bhattacharya was struck with wonder. He had never heard such an explanation. Actually, what happened is after Chaitanya Mahaprabhu explained everything so nicely, Sarvabhauma wanted to protect himself, so he began to explain one Atmarama verse. And Mahaprabhu explained it in his own way, in such wonderful narration, that Sarvabhauma could understand that I am completely defeated, and my philosophy is completely defeated, and no one could speak like this unless they are the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So Mahaprabhu revealed his beautiful form to Sarvabhauma Bhattacharya. Six-arm form. After Sarvabhauma surrendered to Mahaprabhu, he appeared with the bow and arrow of Ramchandra. And then he had the two hands holding the flute of Krishna and two hands holding the danda and the water pot, Kamandalu of Gauranga Mahaprabhu. And Sarvabhauma Bhattacharya surrendered his life. The next day in the early morning, Lord Goranga came to this very house and he knocked on the door and Sarvabhauma was sleeping and Mahaprabhu heard the first words out of Sarvabhauma's mouth was Krishna, Krishna! Krishna, Krishna! Krishna, Krishna! Krishna, Krishna! Krishna, Krishna! And he came to the door and Mahaprabhu said, I have brought some prasad for you, Sarvabhauma. Ah, immediately he bowed down to the prasad and began to eat it. And Mahaprabhu said, You are first class Paka Brahman? How is it you're eating prasad like this? According to the rules and regulations, until you first take your bath and wash your mouth and do your achman and perform your rituals, you cannot take prasad. And Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya replied, he quoted from a Shastra, that Lord Krishna's Mahaprasad is so sacred and so worshipable that it should be taken immediately when received. Even if it is spoiled and comes from a distant place, without discrimination, one should immediately honor that prasad. And Mahaprabhu became so happy. He said, today I have seen the fulfillment of my mission of coming to this earth. That such a hard-hearted, dry, impersonalistic philosopher like Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya. Today he has recognized the glories of Krishna's Mahaprasad. There are so many stories of pastimes that took place at the house of Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya. There was wonderful kirtans here. Sometimes, often, Sarvabhoma would invite Mahaprabhu here for prasad. And he would make so many wonderful preparations. One time Mahaprabhu saw there were hundreds of preparations, opulent, wonderful, big, big piles, mountains of prasad with ghee and all sorts of, of, of opulent ingredients. Jagannath prasad. Sometimes he would cook himself. One time Sarvabhoma invited Mahaprabhu here and he was supposed, he invited him in the morning and he came at noon and there was so much cooked Mahaprabhu said, it would take 10 Brahmins, 10 days to cook this much prasad. And you and your wife cooked it all? Within a few hours? How is this possible? And Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya replied, My dear Lord, it was cooked by he who it is meant to be eaten by. I only collected the ingredients. of all activities. No devotee will ever accept credit for any activity he does, but gives all credit to the Lord and offers all to the Lord. Mahaprabhu said, I'm so happy that your Thakurji, Krishna, is eating so nicely. Now you just give me some little boiled vegetable, like Malati Swami, give me some little boiled vegetable and, and let me have that, some rice. He said, no, no, this is all meant for you. You just try everything. Today you try everything that the Lord has eaten. So in this way, Mahaprabhu would regularly come to this house to accept Sarvabhauma's prasad. You were listening to Radhanath Swami on thesacredconnect.com.